for heavy cover, double wide weed guard. What's happening, fishing friends? Time for another What's in the Box episode, and today I'm coming at you with some Beast Coast Tungsten and Tackle. I picked this stuff up. I think it was a 30% off sale that they had after Thanksgiving. I know this is late and delayed, but I wanted to talk to you about what I picked up. I found these guys, Beast Coast, I think it was 2017. A couple years ago, I put in a tungsten order, and I was very impressed with them. Very good product. This stuff, as you can see, they will even ship you one, one unit if you want it. I picked up five of these, but these didn't fit. But the cool thing about Beast Coast is you can pick however many you want. So when you pick up the weights, it doesn't come in like a, you know, a pre-packaged two, three, four. You put in whatever you want and they package and send them to you. I really like their weights because they're reasonably priced. You know, out of the gate, tungsten is just going to be more expensive than lead. That's how it is. It's a denser material. It costs more, but the nice part about tungsten is it's a lot more compact and we'll look at that. But if you're a beginner, if you're just starting out, don't go out and just go buy a whole bunch of tungsten because you see people using it and you hear pros using it. If you're just starting out, go with lead. Trust me, you're going to get hung up a lot. You're going to lose a lot of weights and it's going to be very frustrating if you spend a lot of money on tungsten and end up blowing through it in a couple weeks. Lead is great to learn on. Lead is what I used for years upon years upon years. You know, I don't know, four years ago, maybe I just finally switched over and started going to tungsten just because of the price. It was just, you know, a little bit out of my range. So just starting out, you will be fine using lead. Now, once you want to start stepping up into those higher weights, tungsten really plays an important role. So really, I was just picking up stuff to restock. I got some three quarter and half ounce. I really didn't have many of those and I need to start throwing a little bit heavier to get through some vegetation. I don't really punch a lot. You know, punch and you're even going up to an ounce, ounce and a quarter to get through some of that six six stuff thick stuff um i didn't go anything that heavy really this is my main if i go to anything and really throw a weight three eighths is my go-to three eighths tungsten is extremely versatile if it's not real windy and it's pretty sparse really shallow vegetation i might drop down to a quarter if i notice they're always hitting it on the fall three eighths is kind of my go-to if i had any weight to grab for a texas rig three eighths now just to show you as i said it's a denser material let me grab a visual aid here. All right, I've got one of my rods rigged up here, and this is one of my rods that I practice pitching and flipping with in my basement. I know I'm a nerd, but I still do that in the winter because it keeps me sane, but this is that 3 8 ounce tungsten. You compare that to a 3 8 ounce lead weight, and you can see it's basically double the size. And I know that's kind of intimidating for a lot of new anglers, new anglers, and including myself, I did this a lot when I started. When I would go with a Texas rig, I would always go with a real small weight. I was intimidated to use a big weight. You know, I didn't really have the right gear for it when I was starting out. So I just always went small. And I think that's a problem that a lot of new anglers have is going with a real small weight. If there's a little bit of wind, if you're trying to go for distance, throwing a real small weight, you know, a little one eighth or three sixteenth, you know, whatever it is, you'll have issues. You can't throw it as far. It's not easy to pitch and flip. So just going with a little bit heavier weight as you're starting out, if you're having a lot of trouble and struggling, will help you out. So that's why when you go over to a tungsten, that size, come back, yeah, definitely plays a part. You know, that same size and a much smaller, more compact presentation. But again, if you're just starting out, you can go with the lead. You're going to lose them. There's no sense in paying a ton of money until you get comfortable with it, until you get more accurate and learn how to get those, you know, snags out, get it free from the brush. Start out with lead. Once you get comfortable with it, move up to some tungsten. Definitely has some advantages. Oh, and I completely forgot to show you. Remember how I was talking about the uh, the Tackle Warehouse rod sleeve and how they have the deal here? You don't necessarily have to buy Tackle Warehouse, but whatever brand you buy, I would highly make sure that it has this little elastic strap. You see how that hooks over the handle on my reel there? Hook that over the handle and this doesn't come off. So taking this in and out of my car or SUV, this thing doesn't slide off, end up in the front seat and lose it, whatever. Stays right in there nice and snug. So yeah. So moving on past the tungsten, what else did I pick up? Well, I was really excited to see these. I saw these released and you can see it's a jig, right? Well, the reason I was excited to try it is because this happens to be, I got two different kinds. I'll show you these kind of both side by side. Two different kinds here. And as you look on the package, the G Spo Battle Flip, which is Gerald Spore, he's one of their sponsored pros. He helped them design this jig, this version. I'll show you that one. They also have a little bit different, the Assault AP Flip. So two different kinds of jigs, starting out with this Gerald Spore. This is the Battle Flip. So this is supposed to be used in real thick wood, you know, heavy brush. And I know for a lot of anglers starting out with a jig, that's very intimidating because you get stuck. And if you spend two, three, four dollars, five dollars on a jig and you get it stuck after two or three casts, it makes you really not want to throw these. And if I ever hear a new person saying, oh, I'm not going to throw that. I don't want to lose it. Or, oh, I would never throw in there. It's too thick. That's the wrong mindset to have. You want to be able to throw whatever you have, wherever you need to throw it, right? Bass aren't going to hide in the real, you know, just uh, cozy, nice, easy to get places. You know, those big fish are going to hide in the really dark, secluded, 
dirty, scary looking places, right? To ambush fish. Ambush? Or even ambush the fish, whatever you want to call it. But they're going to hide in those gnarly spots. So the cool thing about this is it's got a little bit oval, more rounded shaped head with the recessed line tie. So not a lot of points and, you know, kind of sticky, jaggedy spots to get stuck with your jig head up in the wood. It's a pretty neat little design, a little round oval. I like that. You can see it's turned up. So as you throw this and it's coming over wood, you're going to be pulling it up over just like that. So that rounded head is definitely going to help, especially that recessed line tie. Why do I have glitter on me already? As you move back to the shank of the hook, if I can get all that stuff corralled out of the way. If you look at the shank of the hook, it's a very short shank hook. So you can see the relation of this hook point to the, uh, the fiber weed guard here is very close. It's not a real long shank clear back here to get stuck. Generally, most of the time when I get stuck with the jig, it's when I throw over a piece of wood and it comes over it sideways like this, and that weed guard can't, you know, cover it. That's how I get stuck most of the time with the jig. You know, you know, of course you can get it stuck going this way, so the head helps. And kind of all this plays an important role together, but generally that's how I get stuck. So having a weed guard that is closer to the point of the hook is definitely going to help. Now, as we talked about on the shank of that hook, you can see that this has two different trailer keepers. Now, oftentimes with this wire one, it'll do okay, but that'll rip through a plastic in no time, especially if you're in a bunch of wood and, you know, trying to pull through there and it gets kind of stuck a little bit. You're going to rip that plastic no problem. So the cool part about these is that they have two different keepers on it. So as you push that, well, let me just show you. I have another one here already rigged up. As you push that beaver bait or whatever it is on there, you can see that you've got two different things holding it. So I've got the wire keeper holding up here, and I've got that one down there. So it keeps everything on nice and snug, again, in a real compact little presentation. Now, the coolest part that I saved for last is if you looked at the front of the uh, package here, it says, for heavy cover, double wide weed guard. So this is not a double thick. I know a lot of people have seen these and said, well, I don't want a super thick weed guard, right? I have to thin it out. Well, there's two kind of comments I can make on that. Number one, I always fan my weed guards out. I want them to be wide, right? And you can see there, it's not double thick, it's just double wide. Essentially, two different weed guards put right next to each other. But I always fan out my weed guard, and this is gonna be another video I'm gonna be doing soon. But I always fan out my weed guard a little bit, right? As I said, I always get stuck when my jig is coming over and it does something like this on a flat piece of wood. If I fan my weed guard out like that and it can roll over wood and it's not gonna get stuck, money. The weed guard is already pre-trimmed, so usually I cut mine to be right in line with the barb there of the hook. Already pre-trimmed. Didn't even cut that. You can see the top of those weed guards is right there. If you cut it too short when you come over stuff, that hook point's just going to get stuck. If it's too long, it can mess with the hookup ratio. So the weed guard is already trimmed perfect. A lot of people like to trim their weed guard, so if you start out with more weed guard than you need and trim it, awesome. If you start out with just, you know, a regular one and trim a little bit too much, you can't put weed guards back on. So that's another thing you might want to consider. So that's the G Spo. I'm definitely digging that thing. You can see I also got a different kind, just a little bit different. And this comes with a 5 out gammy hook on there. Nice heavy wire hook. This comes with a 5 out flipping hook. This is the Assault AP Flip. So this is supposed to be used for vegetation. So, you know, stand up, uh, I would say like pencil reeds or cattails, those kind of things. It's got a pointy head that's supposed to come through that better. Now, of course, it's not going to be good for, you know, the kind of the slimy you know, vegetation that gets stuck on everything. A jig is not the best. You know, a swim jig comes through it well, but you're always going to kind of be struggling with that on the weed guard. But, I mean, look at the colors on it. Beautiful colors. One thing that I noticed that they do cool about their jigs as well is instead of having just the rubber skirt, it's also got these little tinselly things, which are going to act different in the water. More of like a hair jig almost look to it. Kind of looking like antenna off a crawdad. So I'm definitely digging those. So this is more for the vegetation. Again, has that double wide weed guard. Hook on this is just a little bit longer. You can see there's just a little bit longer hook on it, but not much. So those are the two different kinds of jigs I picked up. I'm super excited to use those. I got a few different colors. This is the neon melon color, kind of a green pumpkin with black and red in there. I got this one. This again was the G-Spo Battle Flip. This is the Elite Craw color, kind of a green pumpkin blue. This black and blue is what they call bruised. Definitely like that one. And also got the toxic color in both of those. That's kind of like your June bug, black and purple. Digging that one as well. So excited to try these out. I really think they will do good in some heavy cover. I will follow up and let you all know because I know that wood and cover, especially when you're starting out jig fishing, can be extremely frustrating. What else did I get in here? Well, I picked up some more of the Miyagi's. You know I am a huge fan of these and just wanted to talk about hooks. Miyagi's, I got a couple different colors of these. This is the Ayu. So it's like a white pearl with a, you know, kind of a dark green, yellow spot on it to imitate shad. I also picked up some of the thread fin. I've got a, a couple shad lakes here around me. I think this one will do pretty good. Kind of that white with blue back. 
Of course, I also got the regular Beast Coast Shad to try out. Kind of a clear belly with a blue glitter up top. And the colors that you've seen before that I've had good success with are the white. I don't remember the actual name of it. And then, of course, the Dope Gill, which is that blue gill color. So I just wanted to show you, before I got these, I had been fishing these Hayabusa hooks on them. I hadn't tried these. I picked some up. I'm not the biggest fan. They worked. But I don't like how the, uh, the lead is right up here at the top, where it's going to be going into the body of the bait. So I wanted to show you all. I picked up the 5 aughts initially and then got some 6 aughts. They still are just not the exact fit that I like. Like I said, they work, but once you push this down, this kind of gets bugged up here and doesn't really want to go all the way through. So I've actually had to cut these. When I do it, I've had to cut into the head of that, and I don't want to do that. I want to keep as much head there as I can. So, but I picked up these Berkeley Fusions. These are a quarter ounce. I use that when I'm fishing real shallow. Good six hot hook. It's a nice heavy wire hook, and it's got a little bit deeper shank here, and it's just wire. So when you rig these up on it, it's just that wire going up into the head of the bait. They fit a little bit better. So I got those. Or you could go up to an owner beast. These are a little bit bigger and a little bit more overkill. Again, this is just a six hot quarter ounce. But the belly, look at the difference. The belly on that beast in back, it's got a much deeper belly. So if you have a, you know, a larger swim bait with a larger belly on it, these beasts are great. But those are just a couple options. I like the six hot quarter ounce if I'm going real shallow. You could bump up to a three eighths or even a half ounce if you're fishing these deeper. All right, so enough of the Miyagi. You've heard me talk about those a bunch. I got some other, which is the end of what's in the box. Some other little swim baits. These are some new ones. These are, well, I guess new to me. These are the 3.65 inch Chaos X. So it's a little bit smaller than the, shouldn't have put those all away. A little bit smaller than the Miyagi. The Miyagi is a 4.75 inch bait. So if you look at these little guys, just a little bit more finesse, smaller version. So you can see a little bit more compact, a little smaller. So I picked these up for some chatter baits, swim jig trailers, and I think they will be killer on some of these little underspins. Now these Cumberland Pros I've been using from Tackle Warehouse and they've been very nice. I think these are like $7 for a two pack, whereas opposed to like a, a fish head underspin, I think those are like five, six bucks for one. So I got these uh, at the Tackle Warehouse sale that I put in a while back, you know, 25, 30% off or whatever. You're getting, you know, essentially a two pack for five bucks, 250 for a, an underspin. They've been very good. Good sharp hook. They've held up well. I would recommend them. Now you could use these if you're throwing an Alabama or umbrella rig. I have never ever thrown one, but these would be a good little compact size to throw on there. Like I said, swim jig trailers, chatterbait trailers, that's what I'm gonna use them for. I got that white color to imitate shad. And of course I picked up some more of those little dope gill. Now one thing I like, I do believe that fish key in on the eye. So I got some of these uh, six cents crush. They had these on clearance. Look at that, those look perfect on there. One bad part of these Cumberland Pros is that they just have like a sticker. It's just a flat sticker of an eye and those fall off pretty quick. So you can just take a Sharpie, you know, if you're on a budget, just take a Sharpie. You don't even have to have anything special and draw a black dot on there to look like the eye. Or if you get one of these, I think these were like $1.80 for this pack of, what, 50? So that's a pretty good deal. Let me just take these out and show you what it looks like instead of just telling you. So if we take one of these, and I always put a little dab of super glue on here first before I do it. I don't just rely on the sticker. Give it a little shot of that. Oh, what do you think? Which one do you think looks better coming through the water? This one? Or this one? I don't know. You be the judge. Maybe I'm superstitious. Maybe it's dumb and I shouldn't do it. But I think the eyes personally look better. Once you put one of those on there, you can get them cheap. And you can get these off Amazon too. I mean, I ran out a while back, but I got, I think, a hundred pack of these for, you know, nothing. Two bucks, three bucks or whatever. So I think the fish, it makes a difference. You know, the fish key in on the head of the bait. They don't want to try to chase it. You know, they want to T-bone it and grab right at the head where it can't get away. And then this doesn't matter. But that's it. I know this was kind of all over the place. This was just another what's in the box. I love the uh, the Beast Coast stuff. They've been great people. like the product. I like this different swimmers. They have a real good action on them. Tungsten is real good and reasonably priced. I'm definitely a fan of that. And again, if you're starting out as a beginner, just go with the lead. But as you get more comfortable with it, you will definitely tell the benefits of a much more compact tungsten jig head or Texas rig weight. And of course the jigs. I'm very excited to try these. I think these will be really good in heavy cover. I am not sponsored by Beast Coast or anything, so you will hear how these do. If I like them, you know, if I tell a difference, I will let you know because honestly, as a beginner, I know one of the most frustrating things for me was getting my jigs stuck and losing them all the time. You know, and it happens when you're in real thick brush or in rock. Sometimes you just have to swallow that pill, but if you can get hung up a lot less and be more confident in fishing it and fishing it wherever you need to, you'll have more success. So let me know in the comments below if there's any things you would like me to pick up and test out and see. I save a little bit of money uh, every month to try to buy some tackle. 
show it on here and tell you all about it. That way, if it's cool, you'll know. If it stinks, hey, I'll give you my opinion so you don't waste your money on it. That's going to do it for today. It is late. I got to get going. I hope you all have an amazing weekend. And uh, until next time.